we told you at the start of tonight's program, a major magnitude earthquake has hit the island of Haiti in the Caribbean. The quake measured around seven points on the Richter scale and its epicenter fell just 10 miles from the capital Port-au-Prince. Haiti's ambassador to the U.S. has described the event as a catastrophe of major proportions. So far, we have no information regarding the casualties. The, the world is coming to an end! It was a big earthquake. It lasts like 15 seconds, I think. Probably the most devastating humanitarian crisis that Hillary Clinton faced during her tenure at the State Department was the tragic earthquake in Haiti. It happened in January of 2010, and literally in a matter of seconds, 250,000 people were estimated to have died, and a large portion of the Haitian infrastructure and economy was just decimated. It was a crisis on a massive scale. The United States is offering our full assistance to Haiti and to others in the region. Uh, we will be providing both civilian and military disaster relief and humanitarian assistance. And our prayers are with the people who have suffered, uh, their families, uh, and their loved ones. In the days and weeks that followed the earthquake in January of 2010, Hillary Clinton made visits to Haiti. And here's the latest on Haiti. U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton arrived in Port-au-Prince just about an hour ago. She is the highest ranking U.S. official in Haiti right now since Tuesday's earthquake. She's meeting with Haitian leaders and international officials to discuss the rescue and relief efforts. In fact, on her first visit, which occurred days after the earthquake, they literally had to stop traffic going in to the airport at Port-au-Prince. There, of course, were relief supplies that were being flown in, but that traffic was stopped so the Secretary of State could come and assess the damage. There is a perception, and there have been complaints or reports of bottlenecks that there's a lot of aid coming in, but it's very hard to get it out to the people who need it. That's just not true. The aid is coming in, we're getting it out, there's just not enough of it yet. She flew in with her political aides on a large federal airplane. She landed at the airport, she made a large press conference, made statements about her commitment to rebuilding this country, and then she was soon whisked away, headed back to Washington, D.C. Theirs is a city in ruins, a country which can do little but wait for help to arrive. The international community responded in the way that you would expect it to. That is, large amounts of money were committed, up to $13 billion from international relief organizations. And of course, you had the official role of the State Department, which would be point on U.S. taxpayer dollars going to Haiti for the purposes of relief. I want to assure the people of Haiti that the United States is a friend, a partner, and a supporter. Hillary Clinton's State Department would oversee the reconstruction effort, with Chief of Staff Cheryl Mills responsible for the allocation of U.S. tax dollars through USAID. And Bill Clinton, already appointed special envoy to Haiti for the United Nations, was named co-chair of the Interim Haiti Recovery Commission, along with a former Haitian prime minister. I hope it will be rebuilt in a, in a much stronger and more sustainable way, and I think the Haitians want that. So this was clearly a Clinton operation from the beginning. Now, the Haitians had their own ideas about how best to rebuild their country. They wanted new roads. They wanted buildings rebuilt. And that's what you would expect. This is how you recover from an earthquake. The problem is that the Clintons had their own agenda, the interests of major donors who had a vested interest in spending that money in Haiti in ways that would benefit them. And so you immediately had this clash between the Haitians and the Clintons. And Haitians complained almost immediately that they were shut out of the decision-making process, that it was really Bill Clinton and a few of his friends that were calling the shots in the IHRC. And they made some monumentally bad decisions that not only didn't benefit the Haitian people, but ended up putting money in the pockets of major Clinton donors who had economic stakes in Haiti. We have been united behind a single goal, 
making investments in this country's people and your infrastructure. So it's a classic example of what some people call disaster capitalism. Disaster capitalism in that a natural disaster creates opportunities for rebuilding to take place, but also for self-enrichment to take place. And if you look at the Clintons and the promises that were made and the results that actually followed, it is a tragic story of crony capitalism gone awry. The single largest relief project that the United States committed taxpayer dollars to, $124 million to be exact, was a project called Caracol, a textile factory that was built in the northern part of the country that was supposed to create some 60,000 jobs and was supposed to create tremendous economic growth. There's a problem here already. You see, the earthquake affected the southern part of Haiti. The northern part of the country was entirely unaffected. But who were the beneficiaries of this? Companies like Gap, Target, and Walmart, to name a few. The Caracol factory was built, but it didn't create 60,000 jobs. It created barely 5,000 jobs. But the major American companies who got textiles tariff-free, made at low wages, benefited enormously. And the end effect on the Haitians was very, very minimal. If you look at some of the infrastructure projects that were undertaken, the Clintons had very grand plans to uh, build large tracts of homes, and there were contractors that were selected for those projects. Sometimes the contractors had experience, sometimes they did not. There's one company in Florida that spent a million dollars getting equipment into Haiti. They had experience in disaster relief, but according to the owners of that company, they only made a small donation to the Clinton Foundation. And guess what? they didn't get any relief contracts. On the other hand, the contractors who did win the awards were given the opportunity to build homes, and in some instances were supposed to build tens of thousands of homes for Haitians. They ended up building a fraction of that. For instance, the New Settlements program was supposed to build 15,000 homes for $53 million. Instead, it built 2,600 homes, less than a quarter of the original estimate for $90 million, or $47 million over budget. And they got away with it. So you had contracts going to these relief organizations that were also involved with the Clinton Global Initiative. And you had this one organization, Dahlberg, that was supposed to do an assessment for relocating people that suffered from the earthquake. They determined that people should be moved to a site that happened to be on a cliff that was highly unstable. USAID's Inspector General reviewed Dahlberg's recommendations and found them basically unusable. One member of the USAID shelter team was quoted by Rolling Stone magazine as saying that the recommendations were so bad, it looked like the team never even got out of their SUVs. Another person said that only one of the people that was sent to Haiti by Dahlberg actually spoke French. Telecom mogul Dennis O'Brien is one of the world's richest people, and he's finding opportunities in the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. The Irish billionaire is the largest private investor in Haiti through his company, Digicel, and he's now leading the Clinton Global Initiative efforts down in Haiti. Probably no one came out better in the Haitian reconstruction effort than an Irish billionaire named Dennis O'Brien. He is a Clinton Foundation donor, giving them between five and $10 million. He helped arrange speeches for Bill Clinton, too. The interest of the Obama administration, particularly the former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, you know, all the, the, all the different things that have happened to help Haiti get up off the floor have been led by the U.S. And he was the owner of something called Digicel, which is a cell phone company at the time of the earthquake. As part of that relief effort, the State Department run by Hillary Clinton wanted to fund a mobile money transfer service that would allow Haitian citizens to transfer and receive money on their phones. Well, Digicel applied to be the recipient of that grant money. Four weeks after their application, Digicel actually sponsored a speech for Bill Clinton in Jamaica, and they paid him $225,000. And as it turns out, within four months of that speech, Digicel would receive the first installment of that grant money. The earthquake actually has been great for Digicel and Dennis O'Brien. 
more than four years since a magnitude 7.0 earthquake devastated Haiti. And outrage there is growing over the largely failed reconstruction effort, despite the hundreds of millions of dollars in aid that has been collected and spent by the IHRC, the Interim Haiti Recovery Commission. So whether you're talking about housing or cell phones, you see that the people that are closest to the Clintons have made out very well from the Haitian earthquake. The rest of the country, the ordinary people of Haiti, not so much. Haitian activists stage a protest outside Hillary Clinton's Manhattan office. The demonstrators claim billions of dollars were stolen through the Haiti Reconstruction Commission headed by Bill Clinton. They also say Haiti was used as a cover for foreign governments to funnel kickbacks of possibly hundreds of millions of dollars through the Clinton Foundation. They say it was done in exchange for favors that Hillary was doing for them as Secretary of State. The tragedy is we had an opportunity to rebuild in a way that would give the people of that country hope. Sadly, that opportunity was squandered, and what took place, rather than rebuilding Haiti, was the self-enrichment by friends of the Clintons. For all of Bill Clinton's talk about building Haiti back better, the fact remains that the most visible evidence of Clinton's role in the recovery isn't the improvement of daily life for everyday Haitians but the construction of new luxury hotels just miles from the folks who have been living in tarps, USAID, handed out immediately after the earthquake. We are telling the world of the crimes that Bill and Hillary Clinton are responsible for in Haiti. But while the world eventually lost interest in Haiti's recovery, the influence and connections afforded to donors from the Clinton Foundation appear to have been lessons learned by others. So how much do connections to the Clintons matter when you're talking about Haiti? Consider the case of gold mining. The government of Haiti had not granted a gold mining concession in 50 years. They decided to do so during the reconstruction of their country, which was being overseen by Bill and Hillary Clinton. What company did they select to get this gold mining permit? A company called VCS Mining. VCS Mining had very little experience in gold mining, but what did they have? they had connections. Shortly after they got that concession, someone joined their board of directors. It just happened to be Tony Rodham, brother of Hillary Rodham Clinton. It was a true disaster, a true disaster that followed the earthquake, which was the natural disaster. This was the man-made clinton caused disaster in relief that led to the wasting of enormous sums of money, the enrichment of elites that were friends with the Clintons, and the Haitians were left in a situation where their life was really not much better than it was the day after the earthquake happened.